the entrance antiphon. Christ loved us and washed us clean of our sins by His blood and made us into a kingdom, priests for His God and Father. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this Mass, let us begin by first calling to mind our sins and asking God for His pardon and His peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of Your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit, have unlocked for us the gates of eternity. Grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened through our Lord Jesus Christ, Your Son, who lives and reigns with You in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him, and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he had faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he had been held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we're coming to the end of the Easter season, where this weekend we will celebrate Pentecost, the 50th day, where we come to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit after Jesus' resurrection and ascension. Today the church, though, as we prepare as we, at the end of the Easter season in this way, the church gives us this gospel. One of the last moments, one of the last exchanges in the gospel of John where we hear, where we hear Jesus challenging Simon Peter. Now it's very famous. There's a bunch of different ways that people have, have uh, read into this, this scripture um, that Peter said, I do not know him three times. He denied Jesus three times on the day of his passion. And this undoes the three times that he denied by saying he loves him three times. But if you look at the, the, the language of this gospel in its original Greek, it, it elicits and reveals something to us that's a little bit deeper than just what our English translation might say. In English, we have a one word for the word love. We, we, we love our spouse, we love our God, we love our children, um, we love pizza, and we love the LSU Tigers. All of those things are different kinds of love. Very different kinds of love. I hope you don't love your God the same way you love LSU, and if you do, be sure to call me, and uh, we'll, we'll, work out. We'll, work, we'll work that out of you. Um, but honestly, the, we, we have these different, in, in the Greek, they would use different words to express different kinds of love. They had a word um, for love like a brother. They had l words of physical or intimate love. They had words for loving God above all else, self-sacrificial type of love. Their words for love actually say something to us today in this gospel. If you look at the Greek, what's actually happening is Jesus says, Simon Peter, do you love me as a brother? Simon Peter responds, yes, Lord, absolutely. I love you as a brother. Second time, he says, Simon Peter, do you love me to the point of dying for me? Do you love me in a self-sacrificial way? Peter responds, I love you as a brother. And Jesus says, Simon Peter, do you love me as a brother? And then distressed, Peter has to say and admit to, yes, Lord, just as a brother. I think that's where the, the end of today's gospel, the challenge that Jesus lays out to Peter about this, when you're younger, you do as you please, but when you're older, you'll be forced to do what you do not want to do right now. It, it makes more sense when we understand what's actually going, is that Jesus is challenging Simon Peter to love him without, a, without restraint. To love him beyond what he thinks he can. 
Because that's the kind of love it's going to take for Peter later on in his life to lead the church courageously, to lead the church uh, led by the Spirit, to lead the church in a bold way that will end up costing him his life. I think that same challenge falls to us today. Where Jesus, where God invites us to love him without a limit. If we look at, if we look at, um, I, I've always been in, interested with every year around Black Friday, every year around Christmas, there's the new hot toy or the new thing that's out. And in, in days past, the, there used to be lines at stores to get the new toy or to get the new piece of electronics or whatever it was, uh, to get the new iPhone or whatever. And people would wait for days and hours. My, my patience for, for love, my love for an iPhone says that I'll wait for about 20 minutes to get a new phone. I always thought those people looked really ridiculous. And then what happens? I go to college and student tickets, right, general admission to an LSU football game. Um, and I remember I would wait for three and four hours in line to get the good seats. And I looked ridiculous to some. But my love for a good seat in an LSU game was about five hours long. God doesn't have a limit to the love that he has for us. God doesn't want us to have a limit to the love that we give back to him. When we come to celebrate Mass, when we come to receive of communion, when we come to pray, God is revealing to us over and over again through the cross, through Good Friday, through the resurrection, that his love for us is beyond any limits. Now when he loves us that way, the only response that we have is reciprocal. The only response that we have to give back is to love him back in the same way. Today, as we come and receive of the graces of this sacrament, as we come to receive the graces of the Eucharist laid out before us, to receive the graces of Calvary handed to us and fed to us, we come seeing, we come and we see, we, it's revealed to us that God has no limit on his love. The question that I have for us, and I think the question for us to ponder in today's Mass, is do you love him? Do we love the Lord to the same extent that he loves us? Do we love the Lord? Are we willing to love the Lord or even to try to love the Lord where it gets uncomfortable? Where it actually starts to have an impact on our life. Today, may we respond to Jesus' invitation that yes, Lord, I love you above all else with no limit. Amen. With confidence in our God who hears us, let us bring our needs before him. For the church, as the body of Christ here on earth, may the Lord grant us patience for one another, bearing with one another in love, in love with humble and gentle hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world, national, and local leaders, may the God who gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning grant them just and prudent decision-making. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted for their faith in Christ, may the hope of the resurrection fill them with courage and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may the grace of God embolden and strengthen us in our lives of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they come to share in the glory of the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and for more holy marriages, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those affected by the COVID-19 outbreak, for all of those who have fallen ill, and for all of those, all of our healthcare professionals who find themselves on the front lines in this battle, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own special intentions, for the intentions of today's Mass, and the intentions of our Holy Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Almighty and eternal God, hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray, upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our conscious, consciences through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down Your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time He was betrayed and entered willingly into His passion, He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Your death, O Lord, until You come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, we offer You, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that You have held us worthy to be in Your presence and minister to You. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, Your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in Your mercy. Welcome them into the light of Your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased You throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify You through Your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of Your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to Your apostles, Peace I leave You, My peace I give You. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of Your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with Your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will teach you, he will teach you all truth, says the Lord. Alleluia.
our prayer for spiritual communion. O oh my Jesus, I turn toward the holy tabernacle where you live hidden for love of me. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come nevertheless into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, render it like unto your own. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof, but only say the words and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant we pray that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly, 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 Deacon Daniel Duplantis and Deacon Rusty Bruce, uh, two local men, two men from our, from our diocese, getting ordained for our diocese to be priests of Jesus Christ. So let us continue to pray for them. Uh, their ordination will be June 6th. So um, let's continue to keep them close in prayer. Keep all of our priests close in prayer. Keep each one of us close in prayer uh, that we can get through this and continue, uh, continue opening back up right, and bringing our communities back together. So thank you all so much. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.